Hey, what's up everybody? It's Matt from HowToMotorcycleRepair.com. Uh, in today's video, I want to let you know that I have two new videos out for KX125 and KX250 bikes. Uh, it covers the 94 through 2007 models, and actually it's probably going to cover models outside of that, but basically um, what I did is I printed all the service manuals from 94 to 07, and I feel that it's like 95% the same. Uh, this bike is an 01 KX250. That's the one in the video. And basically, um, going through the rest of them, they look very similar. And for you guys that own KDX models, um, this video would help you guys as well. All right, so the top end replacement video runs two hours and 45 minutes long. The full engine rebuild, which is top and bottom end, runs six hours long. Man, it took a while to produce that one. Uh, to give you a couple facts here, I got 111 gigs of raw video and audio footage. And it's uh, basically 107 video clips put together for the whole project. So just thought I'd give you that uh, little bit of information. All right, first off, I want to thank the guys that pre-ordered this. I put this, uh, I put a video out two months ago saying, hey, this video is coming. What would you like to see in it? And 95% of the people that commented, it said, hey, I, I want to see a lot of information on the power valve, the KIPS power valve, and also the bottom end, the transmission, how it goes back together. So basically for those topics or those areas, I did it twice, for both for disassembly and reassembly, different camera angles. I you know, went into detail a little further on that, so it should be clear as mud for you guys, right? All right, I wanna summarize the parts that were replaced in this project. Um, the first being the piston. Obviously, you know, if you're gonna do this, do the piston and rings. The piston was okay, had a little scuffing, but uh, nothing too major, but definitely needs to be replaced. Uh, the cylinder plating was paper thin. I mean, in some areas, it was completely down to the aluminum cylinder, so I think I was on borrowed time if I didn't start, if I didn't decide to open it up. So basically, Kawasaki has the electrofusion version of Nikosil. It's their proprietary uh, plating, and it's known to be not the best. I think in 03, they went to a different plating technique or a different process or whatever. Um, but anyway, they, they, they don't last all that long from what I hear. So I sent this out to Millennium Technologies to have it replated, and that should be good for 100 hours or whatever. So they did a real nice job, and the, and the cylinder looks awesome. Next, when I had the top end apart, I inspected the lower uh, main bearings and the rod end bearing. The lower rod end bearing had just the slightest amount of slop. So what I decided to do is, um, it was a stock crank in here by the way. So I took the stock crank out and I sent it to Ken O'Connor Racing and had it rebuilt with a Pro-X rod kit. And they did a really nice job. My webs had a little surface rust on it. So what they did is they cleaned it up, buffed it up, and uh, put it all back together and it was trued to within half a thou to one thou. Spec is one thou and I think it's better than that. I had a makeshift V-block assembly which I just double checked their work and uh, you know that that's a very cost effective way and I kept all the Jap made parts in there, Japanese made parts in there. So really happy with both Millennium and Ken O'Connor Racing and I went with a bicycle piston so that takes care of that. As far as gaskets and seals and all the other parts, I went with Kawasaki OEM. All right, so here's what I learned from the, this rebuild. Um, I didn't have to rebuild it. You know, it had two, or I thought I didn't have to rebuild it. I had 200 PSI of compression. It was running just fine. The owner did the top end 30 hours ago. He didn't clean the power valve. I figured I got a little more time on it. Well, I started taking things apart and the plating was thin. This piston was a little scuffed and the lower end rod end bearing had a little place. So I think I was on borrowed time. And uh, basically what it taught me is that you can't, you don't know what condition your engine's in until you take it apart and inspect it. And you know, two strokes don't last forever. Actually no dirt bike motor lasts forever. You know, these are high performance machines. They don't last forever. All right, it really makes sense to do this job yourself for a couple of reasons. Um, this bike is 15 years old. It's valued at what a thousand to two thousand bucks is what you see them go for Basically dealers are gonna charge you 600 plus to You know for the labor to do this 
So does that make sense investing that kind of money in an old bike like that to go to the dealer? No, you gotta do it yourself. And this video will show you how. I'm giving you all the resources to help you do it yourself. The videos, the service manuals are available on, at, on my site for free. All right guys, so this is a video sample on YouTube. Um, to purchase it, you're gonna see annotation links or the I cards up at the top. And basically, uh, credit card and PayPal are accepted. A question I get often is, you can watch it as many times as you want. People think that there's only a certain amount of time period or a certain amount of views. No, it's yours forever. I mean, you bought it, it's yours. Watch it a million times if you'd like. All right, it'll play on any device. Um, your PC, laptop, tablet, smartphone. Um, if you have a smart device, like a phone or a tablet, you're gonna need the Gumroad app in order to, to play it on those smaller devices. On the computer, it just launches in a browser. All right guys, also email support is included. Even if you don't buy this video and you need email support for rebuilding your engine, I'm happy to do so. I mean, I have um, email chains of 40 to 60 emails of people who um, just need help working on their bikes and I'm willing to do that. So if you need help, go to my contact page on my website and just shoot me an email. All right guys, before we get into the rebuild, let's just jump right into the first fire up and the first test spin. And then we'll jump right into um, taking it apart. All right guys, first fire up. Let's see how many kicks it takes. I'm guessing seven. Choke up, huh? All right, so before you begin, make sure you have the service manual printed, which you see on the left there. Have some sandwich bags with a Sharpie marker. That's gonna help you label all the fasteners and all the stuff that uh, we take apart. 
I have my cell phone there, so um, that's for taking pictures. Um, I've, I'm not going to do that because I'm videotaping it, so I can reference that uh, if I run into any issues. But definitely take a lot of pictures along the way. It'll definitely help. I also have a magnetic tray. Actually, I have several magnetic trays. Um, I probably own like 8 to 10 of them, so definitely have some of those handy. You're going to need some rags. And also you see that clear tote there, that's basically um, for parts and whatnot. And usually I put, throw all the baggies of fasteners in there as well. Um, for a project like this, I probably have uh, five to six totes of those in various sizes. Very cheap at Target, about a buck each or so. So it's, it's definitely handy to have that since it may be a few weeks before you uh, begin to put this back together. All right, so let's get started. Uh, this is a seat bolt here, it's 10 mil. Jump into the right side, same thing, 10 mil. And I wanna point something out. This is the bolt that came off the left side. See how there's a shoulder on it? This bolt came off the right side, no shoulder. So it looks like I'm gonna have to order a new bolt, so. All right, now we can remove the seat. Slide it back. Eight mil side panel bolt here. Back on the left side, eight mil. Let's remove this radiator shroud. These are all eight mil. On the right side of the bike, same thing. Another eight mil here for the fuel tank. And we can take this guy off here. So put that in a baggie. Make sure your fuel is shut off, which is this position here. And we can go ahead and disconnect the fuel line. And I should have had a rag handy for that. Go ahead and wipe up any spilled fuel. tank out of the way. All right, so take a number two JIS here, or number two Phillips, either or. Loosen the carb boot clamp. A six mil Allen key. Remove the subframe bolt. And over here on this plastic protector, there's a zip tie. Go ahead and remove that. Up here, there's another six mil screw. Let's move to the other side. All right, same thing on this side two six mil screws. And it looks like my silencer is held on with couple zip ties so I'm just gonna break one of them off. I forgot to remove this little uh, electrical box here and don't lose this little spacer in here. Uh, for this one I am gonna put this back in here so I don't lose it.
little grommet right here. And mine has an extra zip tie. All right, now my subframe has been powder coated, so it's a little, a little tight. stuck in there just go ahead and put that on let's go ahead and remove the carburetor just loosen this Phillips screw here unbend the clamps for these vent hoses. Careful, don't pull on any of these wires. And I think we can just leave it right here for the remainder of the repair. It's not going anywhere. Just make sure all these, all these cables are too tight. Well, maybe we can zip tie that right there so it's out of the way. Doesn't mess us up with the top end. Let's remove this uh, pipe here. It's better to remove this one. This comes off all in one assembly. Down here, there's a 10 mil nut. And it looks like we have to remove this whole bracket here. And we can pull the springs off the pipe up front here. washer just fell out which is a ceiling washer up in the cylinder and there's two o-rings on here that we're going to replace as well all right guys I quickly want to mention after you have the pipe off you can shine a light in there and crank the kickstarter over until the piston is all the way down and that way you can get a good view of what your cylinder looks like um, obviously we're going to take this all apart but looking in the cylinder uh, the walls look kind of rusty pitted and I see some scoring. Uh, you know, it's hard to tell through here, but you know, it's kind of surprising. This thing has 200 psi of compression, and it ran great. So it just goes to show you that even though everything's fine, it you know, inside your engine, it might start to wear out. And again, you can crank it, roll the Kickstarter over to bring the piston up, and you can 
start to view the bottom of the skirt and it's starting to show a little bit of wear so um, I think it's a good good thing that we're doing the top end on it all right guys time to drain the coolant uh, I hate coolant so there's a drain bolt here for the cylinder and there's a drain bolt here for uh, the rest of the system Alright guys, I had to pause for a second, some coolant splashed onto the lens, lens and uh, made the shot all foggy. So I got a view out here, you can see it just squirted a little bit out. Now what I'm going to do is open the radiator cap and it's going to pour out some. So what I do is I just slowly open this and just let it drain like that. Try to regulate the flow so it doesn't squirt all over the place. Alright, radiant capes off. Go ahead and remove the cylinder drain. And both these are the same, so that's good. Pull these radiator hoses off. Can't you tell I love my drill that I got for uh, Christmas? This thing's just awesome, man. It's just a hose removal tool. Just kind of breaks it free. I like to run the clamps back in just so I don't lose them. A bit of silicone spray will help. Again, put the clamp back on, just tighten it up. Okay, on the left side, let's remove these, this radiator hose here.
Just remove this bolt here. Loosen this one. I'm just gonna pivot that out of the way. I'll stick this bolt back in here so I don't lose it. This one is uh, missing because it's off the side panel. We're gonna remove, or the radiator shroud rather. We're gonna go ahead and remove this one. This just pops out. I'm gonna sneak in here and loosen this clamp in here. And then this one up here up top. So basically the hoses that connect the two radiators. Go ahead and loosen those up. Loosen these screws here. and work the hoses off. Let's go ahead and remove this screw here. There's two little plastic things here that you can just pop out and that removes this, uh, this plastic thing here. Just put the fastener back in. We'll swing this bracket out of the way. Let's remove the left hand radiator. 